You... Yes, because I mean, there seem to be two things mm. here. That I, it, this, either it's nostalgia for the 60s or it's something much more than that. I mean, because science fiction goes back a lot thing. further than the yeah. 60s, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, is it, is it escapism? What is it? Is it people trying to get away from... Uh, no, the... no, I, no, I think it enriches their lives, really. I mean, it, um, it taps that part of the soul that... Uh, in, some people tap a part of the soul that, um, uh, that needs to play things out like that. Other people sort of tap into their soul by writing um, or by... <clears throat> Or by listening to music. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that's that's evocative, and I think brings one back back to one's roots and puts one in communi sort of communicating with other people at the same time. I think it maybe takes a special person, but um, uh, to really get off on it. But um, um, I you don't, I gather. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't want to uh, wouldn't want to apply any any psychiatric labels to it. I, mean, I think that's too, that, that's too really that really trivialises what's a lot of fun for a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. So you said it's essentially a lot of fun. It's not it's not necessarily mm. people trying to escape. No, from no, no. I don't and think so. There's also this thing about you know why do some people like westerns? You know? yeah. I mean that's another yeah. genre, but nobody kind yeah. of goes, oh, they're, they're like westerns. You don't, you <laughs> don't see labels. But you don't see. Yes, like they do. Yes, yes they do. They do. do. <laughs> of course they do. There are clubs all over the place that, that people do that and they enact out films, etc. and do high what, noon. The gay clubs down in Oxford Street. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, no, but you wait a minute. You, you, you people tell me, I mean, it, uh, are you trying to escape from mundane lives in this existence into something more exciting well, and adventurous? Well, fans escape from mundane lives mm. to pop fans escape from mundane lives. I you think know, yeah. it's, it's not just fantasy and science fiction that uh, draws upon that yeah. kind of desire, that need. Yeah. And also, you've got to remember that that um, science fiction and fantasy are really well served by film and television in its earliest forms. Um, uh, film, in fact, the first film was Medio's Trip to the Moon, a science fiction film. Yeah, but see, you're, you're, a lot of you are actually living it out in a, in, in a way, aren't you? I mean, it's, it's, it is different in a sense to people who are addicted to westerns. Because I don't know that they actually live it out in the way that you Rocky Horror people oh, do and other people do. I have a famous quote from um, a guy who used to play Frankenfurter when it first started. And he said that Rocky Horror is um, a way to let yourself be whatever you want to be without anybody saying anything and without you having to worry about doing it. That's a, there's an actual line in Rocky Horror so, that says, don't dream it, be it. Yeah. Which means if you want to do something, do it. Yeah. The show right. is telling yes. you to go out and do it. I think the other thing is you say, oh, it's the 60s. Uh, what is it that's important about the 60s? I think it's... The people who are kids, like most of the people here, who are kids during the 60s, have now grown up. We are now the people with the disposable incomes who are buying cars and who are running society. And what was important to us then, a lot of us have remembered it. So, I mean, it's not special in the 60s. I mean, if you looked a generation back, it would have been the 50s. It's just that now the mainstream, the people who are, uh, by and large, controlling things are the people who grew up with Thunderbirds mm. and for that reason it's important to us. Yeah. I think it's just oh, something yeah. to do with the imagination. It's just that um, like you know when uh, when your mother tells you a story and puts you when you're going to bed at night when you're four or whatever it's it's the fact that it, it's uh, it is escapism but not escapism as a derogatory term. I think the, the, what you were saying about uh, the fact that it's play is very important. You know, you kind of forget that. It's all this that we're sort of out to make a career and how much money have you got and what car do you drive. And, but there's nothing wrong with playing and you're allowed to do that as a kid and no, nobody, everyone goes, oh, look, he's, you know. But if you play as an adult, somehow it's, it's made to look a bit strange. But I don't see what's wrong there's with that. There's also a thing about the, the fact as, as, a, as a group, being Thunderbird fans, is sharing, is being able to share uh, in-depth knowledge about a particular series or whatever it is, is the fact that as a group, you, you study that series and you, you, you take in all that information and you know more about that series maybe than, than other people. But it's mm. always fascinating. I mean, it's even fascinating for us. I mean, we weren't Thunderbirds fans as such, but it's wonderful to meet um, Jerry Anderson and, and work with him the on creative oh, things and yes. work with him on, 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 other, on other projects and mm. stuff. And you meet the guys who actually made the models and the, the, the puppeteer, and it's fascinating. And I think that's part, part of it as well, is that actually that kind of knowledge thing. Stephen Wan, what do you make of all this? Well, my view would be that science fiction is hardly trivial. It's extremely profound. Uh, and Alvin Toffler really said it best in, in Future Shock when he said that really science fiction is really the fiction of the future. Now, why does it appeal to us now? Well, it appeals to us now because we are a society in change. And societies in change have to confront new technology and new beings and new forms of life and new values, new lifestyles, all of this. And so really, this science fiction is 
is how uh, society really starts to deal with the new ideals, the ideals that will become the norms and the reality of the future. So is it's, it escapism or is it, it just... It is escapism. No, it's much more profound than this. And in fact, that's, remember, H.G. Uh, Wells and Jules Verne, they wrote during the Victorian time, a period of our history that was of tre tremendous societal change. Uh, every, every uh, uh, view from you know, uh, biology, religion, everything was being questioned during the Victorian time, and that's when science fiction began. All of the concepts were being profoundly challenged so that people could actually deal with the societal changes. Yeah, because we're really talking about two different things here, aren't we? We're talking about science fiction and we're talking about fantasy. And, if I might, and there's obviously a difference between the two. If I might connect the two, or at least try to connect the two just for a second, and it would be this, that, that uh, societies have ideals and they, they have fantasies. Th those two things are connected because a fantasy is only an approximation of an ideal, whether it be an ideal society, an ideal, an ideal hell, or an ideal antithesis, which is Rocky Horror Show because yeah. it's, <laughs> it is every norm challenged. Uh, time warp, Rocky Horror. Oh. Time is our most basic concept, and time work is, and the challenge of that is exactly one of the major themes of Rocky. Yes. So, well, Ian McLean, I mean, you're from Battalion, the Batman fan club, aren't you? I mean, what is it about, uh, about Batman that uh, well, is in any way related to all this? I think an important factor, too, is that the original Batman show appealed on many levels. They were very clever scripts where the children watching the show watched it for action adventure. I remember I was, I was in fourth class at school, I was riveted. Um, and it was the action that I looked for. As a teenager, I looked back at the repeats and thought, they're making fun of this. Mm. And then as an adult, I was just in hysterics on the floor. You know, Phyllis Diller walked into one episode as a cleaning lady. I didn't know that as a kid. But then as an adult, I thought, wow, you know. So you've got the multi-level, a whole family can watch the show and each member is getting something different out of it. Um, and I guess it also adds to the communication too. The families can talk about the show, but they've all got something different out of it. Yes, you see, I think a lot of people don't understand the, the dedication with which a lot of you pursue these interests, be it uh, Batman or Doctor Who or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or Rocky Horror, whatever. How do you explain that? The dedication, the, uh, the, the acting it out, the, uh, the living it, the belonging to clubs, uh, the reading every word that can be bought on the subject. How do you I explain think that's that? A natural uh, thing for all humans to want to belong to clubs. Mm. It's not just science fiction. You mentioned before pop groups, but there are things which people think are even today are strange, like bird spotters, train spotters, those sort of things. They belong to groups, they produce fa magazines, things like that. So it's not a thing which is peculiar to science fiction. Fandom, fans, is dedication, no matter where it is. Mm. Yes, I mean, even football fans. There's no real difference in the... the well, I can't find the word I want. There's no real difference between a football fan belonging to a football club and a science fiction fan belonging to a science fiction fan club. They're doing it for the same <laughs> ultimate reason, that they want to be with other people who share the same interest. Mm. And science fiction is your hobby. Or football is your hobby. We, we, haven't, we, we haven't heard from Hitchhiker's Guide for the Galaxy here. I mean, <laughs> what I just wanted to comment on um, what Dallas and Kerry were saying, I think there's a basic need with everybody to want to convey to people something they're enthusiastic about, to find somebody else that's just as enthusiastic. Mm. It, um, it's very satisfying to find someone that enjoys something as much as you do, and I think that's part of fandom. It's also a part of any other subculture, like pop cultures, things like that, that we mm. were talking about. Uh, like and Star Trek. We haven't heard from Star Trek either. Where's Star Trek? Yeah. Oh, I like... Yeah. Well, that's the thing that I've found that I've enjoyed the most about Star Trek is the uh, creativity that goes on in it, the uh, stories that the fans write and publish in their own fanzines and things, um, uh, the artwork, uh, just the um, thing for getting down and publishing, it's, it's yeah. just... Terrific. Yeah, but I mean, Star Trek fans, are, I mean, of all One of you, Star, Star Trek fans are absolutely dedicated to it. I mean, how many, how many times have you seen the Star Trek movies and the Star Trek television series and so on? It, it almost matches Thunderbirds, I think, yeah. doesn't it? A lot of fans... Yeah, Karen, Karen Lewis. I, I think it does. Um, I feel Star Trek's more an adventure thing. That's my own personal opinion. What, you lose yourself in the adventure yeah, with Star Trek? Yeah, I think Trek. so. And, and the fact that people are out there in space, we know we'll be there one day. And it's just, you feel 